Well, good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to Ruth's studio. And today um, we're going to do a little bit of jelly printing. Jelly printing, um, for those of you who have not heard of it, seen it, done it, is a type of mono printing. And that means that you pretty much get one print out of what you make. Um, sometimes we can get reverse prints, which we call ghost prints, but you really only get one of the type that you have designed initially. So it can be a lot of fun and you can get some really unique outcomes. So we're going to just get into it really quick. First of all, you need a jelly plate. And this is what a jelly plate is. They come in different sizes, but it's very gelatinous and soft and mushy. And it's sticky on both sides so you can put it down and it's going to hold still. I've seen some people do it on a mat, but here's what happens. The mat moves around. So today, we're going to get rid of the mat, and I have a plastic tablecloth here, and it sits nice. Whoops, I just jiggled the camera. <laughs> All right, so this way it stays put where you want to put it. Be very careful that you don't scratch this, because any scratches that you put in it will be there forever. The nice thing about it being two-sided sticky is if you do mess up and scratch one side, you could flip it over and use the other side until you mess that side up. But if you're real careful with it, it can last for years. All right, so then we're going to need some type, any type, of acrylic paint. And I just have a few bottles sitting here so that I don't have to disturb the stand that the camera is on because that's where my paint is stored. And I didn't think to take some of those down before starting. So um, we have a couple greens and a purple and an orange and a gray. Um, and that's kind of what we'll deal with for now unless I can manage to grab one off of there. So any kind of acrylic paint will do. It doesn't matter what brand. It could be house paint. It could be... Um, golden heavy body it could be high flow it, it really doesn't matter as long as it's acrylic paint then you're going to need some kind of paper to put the print onto and you can see um, this was actually put onto a page from an old book I don't know why it's so trendy right now but it is <laughs> it happens to look nice so you could use that or you could hear some pages out of a book that I have and I get these books from yard sales. People have cast them off, not wanting them anymore. Um, I wouldn't go around your house tearing up books. You can also get old music books at yard sales and thrift stores. And it looks really cool to put some of these things on music sheets. Or if you're not that adventurous, good old copy paper will work as well. And I've torn this in half because this is a six inch, five or six inch, I've forgotten now. Uh, square and it must be five eh, I don't know it's one of the two but this fits nicely on it and um, you can also use index cards and recipe cards and envelopes all kinds of things anyway we're gonna start with this the main ingredient here besides the paint is a brayer you've got to have a brayer because we're gonna move it around and uh, that's what you got to move it around with so we're gonna start a real simple one first off and I'm going to I haven't used these paints in a while so I'm going to give them a good shake and you don't need a lot but you also don't want dried specks of paint whoops there we go that kind of looks like a frog <laughs> all right um, you know what I'm going to do is is put a little white I haven't even opened this white darn it you know what I'm just going to grab a bottle of paint sorry to jiggle you and I probably moved your focus just a little bit I'm playing with a new setup in my new studio and you're sitting on a lazy Susan <laughs> so here's um, a couple more blobs of paint so we've got this blue and this green and what you want to do and I'm going to use this as my um, you need to have one sheet of paper where after you're done rolling around you can get the excess paint off and that, that'll be that for me and I have more paper here to do the actual print on. So I'm going to kind of 
go sideways, then the other ways. Now I've put two colors on here, you don't have to, and I just saw a little dried globby thing. Okay, that's going to be my yucky page. Um, and if you see any hairs in there, you want to get those out. This is a piece of dried paint from around the lip of the bottle. Um, with two colors, you want to make sure you don't completely <laughs> get them uh, mixed into one color, which I almost actually have here. But you also want to make sure that you don't have too much paint on. And that's something you just kind of learn by feel. And this, to me, feels a little too slippery. So I'm going to roll some of it off onto this paper. See, you can just take some off if you have too much. And you'll get to hear. After a while, you will hear when you have the right amount. All right, I'm going to just go with this. It's, I, it might be a little heavy, but I think we'll be OK. Um, and usually, I will keep a baby wipe sitting out on the table nearby so that I can set my roller on it, not have it in there. All right, so the easiest thing, um, this is just a hair pick, and I'm just going to kind of drag it through here and make some designs, and I'm going to wipe it off on a baby wipe so I can use it again and not have that green on there. And I have a pattern, and I can now put my paper on it, Give it a little rub, making sure that you rub all of that area, peel it up, and there's our print. Isn't that gorgeous? Now there's a little bit left here. You kind of want to have a place off to the side where you can set them to dry, but they do dry rather quick. I'm going to see if I can get a second print of what's left. It doesn't always work out, but even if it doesn't, you can then layer on top of it another print. It doesn't really matter. But it does help clean off your jelly pad for the next go. So I'm just going to say that's just a little bit of texture. And I'm going to rub off the green that's on the edge. There we go. And that's the neat thing about them is if you don't like it, you just keep going. and it will produce something eventually that you do like. All right, so I'm now going to add a little texture. I'm going to put some blue because that one turned out to be more green than blue. And I'm going to get this spread out again like it was. Now this time, well, I might be OK. I was thinking maybe I didn't have enough on here. Yeah, I think I am going to... See, you don't want those scrapey marks made from the edge of the roller either. So you kind of have to be careful. You can scooch it around. Here's another little glob. There we go. Sometimes you'll see it beat up, and that could be when your jelly is new. Or it could be the paint, or it could be the weather out that day. Who knows? All right, so now something that we all come in contact with, bubble wrap. And this happens to be at the inside of a bubble envelope. But just the same, I'm going to just press it down on here, pull it up. And I have all kinds of bubbles. On here, I have blue paint. And on there, I have impressions. And I'm going to grab a piece of paper, lay it on the pattern, and pick it up onto the paper. Ooh, yeah. Loving that. And this one is dry. So I can actually lay it right on top of that. OK, um, blue, purple. Purple goes nicely onto blue. And I have a little cardboard star here, which is another one of the things. This time I'm kind of shaking the stuff out onto my hand, along with a little paint. Whoa. 
Okay, no paint boogers allowed. Thank you. And I got a little paint on my hand. Big deal. I'll have a lot more before the end of the day. All right, so we'll spread this out. And you can uh, do two colors, but like I said in the beginning, it's you have to be careful not to blend them together too well. So I'm just going to work with one color for a little bit. Maybe on the next video, I'll do some two color things. All right, so I can just set this down and pick it up, set it down, pick it up, and I'm giving it a little jiggle as I set it down. Sometimes you might want to wipe this off on a piece of paper just so that you don't move that paint to a different area because what we're trying to do is, whoops, take paint off with it, okay? All right, so now I'm going to set that down, get a new sheet of paper, give it a good rub. And by the way, if you want to see more videos about this, hit that subscribe button at the bottom. And if you click on the bell, it will alert you in your notifications when I put a new one out. Look at those stars very cool very cool and again this one is just about dry and I don't think we're gonna get anything more off of that one that's for sure now um, I did this once with a circle I think I'm gonna put a little more purple on here let's give it a try with a star um, once in a while you can get some pretty good shadowing effects by setting something down and then dragging it across the jelly. All right, let's see. I'm really getting a lot of uh, weird things today. All right, so you set it down and then you kind of just drag it across. Yeah, that didn't work as well. With a circle, it worked really well because it kind of looked like um, a shadow moving across and I don't have that one sitting here to show you. So I'm just going to cover this back up, say, nah, that didn't work. So we'll just try something else. Now, a real popular thing to use with jellies are stencils. And you can see this one is totally blue. I gave up on getting the paint off. But um, you can use this two ways. You can put your paint down first and then put the stencil down. I have a little thing there that I'm tempted to take off, but I'm not going to. Now, I can just not touch it and put the paper down on it. And you want to press where you can feel the stencil so that you can get the paper down into every area where there is no stencil to go and grab that paint. Otherwise, you won't get a very good pattern. Okay. You peel it up, and oh yeah, nice pattern. Yummy. Now, what also has pattern to be gotten is in between the stencil and the jelly, there is paint trapped. So when I lift this up, look at the pattern on the jelly. And you might notice the pattern on this or the paint on this still. And so once in a while, I will just set down another piece of paper, lay that down, and see if I can get any of the paint off of the back side of the stencil. Now, there won't be as much as what we got on this one over here, but who knows? Yeah, it's pretty light. Pretty light. That's okay. Let's see what we've got under here. Mmm. Yum. Now see, that is the reverse of this. So that makes that a ghost image. That's what they call a ghost image. The leftover one. Although I did hear another definition of it earlier this week, and I'm not sure about that one. That would be if you tried to take a second print and what's left on here being a ghost image. And I've only ever heard that once. So I, I don't know how much credence I'm going to put in it at this point. But 
most of the time you don't really have much on there. All right, so the second way, I said there were two ways, and there might be more, two ways to use a stencil. The other way is to lay it on the jelly, then put your paint on. Come on, get on there. Well, if you don't want to play, I know some green that will. Oh, yeah, we had that problem with the purple, now that I think about it. All right, so I'm going to take my brayer and give it a couple passes. And remember, since I have two colors, I want to kind of be gentle so that I don't mix it all together. Kind of looks a little tie-dyed at the moment. And I'm just going to take the clean side of this, lay it down, and press the entire area feeling the stencil, making sure that the paper goes down into the non-stencil areas, picking up all that yummy paint. And what we have, purple didn't play very nice with the green. Not quite as good of a print as the first time. That might have more to do with the type of stencil that I used. But I can get a pretty good print off of this one. I'm going to use the back side of this because the front wasn't any great shakes anyway. And much better than this first one. Much better. <coughs> and there might even be a little bit left over. Not a lot. So, there's a lot more that we can do with this. Um, I've taken little plastic mats and used pinking shears, cut the edges to make something that um, kind of works like this did. Lots of things, but I'm going to save some of it for video too. So I want to thank you for joining us today. And like I said before, hit that subscribe button and click the bell if you want to be notified when new ones are out. That way you don't have to come looking. All right? And otherwise they will just end up in your subscriptions and you'll have to go looking for them. Thanks again.